Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And good evening. It is a, uh, a Wednesday night. Um, it is nine o'clock and it's time to tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever capable mod master that is Mark. Yes, back uh, for a, a second week um, after a little break. Uh, it, it's, been, it's been a little bit difficult getting back into this, but I think we're starting to find, find our flow hopefully. Um, I, I think we must be because this week we've, we've got uh, quite a packed show so less of the waffle from me. Um, I do apologise I haven't managed to to get to the uh, to the pound shoppers yet um, to, to seek the, the ultimate um, pink mod um, but we will be trying to get down there to, uh, to get one of those very 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 shortly. Um, what have we got lined up for you this week? This week um, Mark as, as he did last week he, he's coming back with, with a little bit of blood um, we didn't promise that, but he, he just slipped in for good measure. Um, and, and he's been looking at uh, finishing off that uh, Nintendo controller mod. Uh, myself, uh, I'm still... It, it's healing. It's it's healing very, very, very nicely. But um, it's still not there. I've still got a little raw spot on the top, so gripping things has been incredibly difficult, um, hence the look of frustration on my face at this moment in time. Um, so we're going to crack right in with my first little bit, which is breaking down a mod, looking at uh, looking at repair, um, and, and looking at sort of uh, yeah, the, the old VV stuff. Um, I promise next week we're going to crack in with some stuff. No, let's crack off with Mark first and, uh, and see me back very shortly after this. Now, before I get started this week, I need to own up a little and uh, make a correction to last week's video. Uh, first off, you may notice a nice scratch on my hand and plaster. That's because I've taken quite a deep chunk out of my hand. Uh, so I shouldn't have taken the mick out of Gary that much, I think. Uh, I did it with the correction. I did say I was going to be making and jig out of clear perspex, which I got a lovely finish on. But as you see, the hole that I drilled to the side has drifted and come out. And when it did, it jammed in place, whipped around, took a chunk out of me. I cannot work with this thickness of perspex easily. Uh, the temperature that the drill bit gets to inside of here keeps melting the plastic, and as you come to take it out, plastic sets again and it tends to jam your drill bit in place. So a lot of these have drifted, are not straight, you just can't work with it. And I've so far snapped three drill bits trying to drill this stuff. So it won't be made out of this. It's probably going to be made out of wood but you'll see that when I get around to making it. But I thought I'd better mention that at some point in case you're wondering why that happened. So enough of the fiddling. It's time to get back to work with this. And the first job I'm going to do today is drill the hole for the atomizer connector. Now I've put a couple of screws back in this to try and hold it in place. And I'm going to start off drilling slightly towards the front rather than the back. It's going to be slightly off center. Hopefully that will give me a better hole. So I'm starting off with a pilot drill. Nice and gently through there. 
I'm rather feeling that this is going to be quite easy to drill out. So I'm going to switch to the stub drill bit, which is as usual marked off at 11.30 seconds. Which is my preferred size for the 510 connectors. It seems to give me the best fit. So lining up with the pilot hole, I just need to take it very gently. Because this is in two parts and the hole is going to come across this part, it's not an ideal way to drill it. So just as gently as possible. being plastic heat's always a problem as well as plastic melts when it gets hot and drilling creates heat. So there you'll see I've got a hole and it's just coming across the edge so it's not too bad at all. I'll pop the 510 in and you can see it almost goes all the way in and that'll press fit in place once I can redo it. So I'm working pretty well. Now, when I originally decided to do this, uh, in fact in the previous videos, I was planning on adding an external micro switch to over this button. But when that was pressed it would activate the micro switch. But since I've been away and I've been looking at it, I'm looking I could actually mount the board here and then when the rubber's in place you press this and it'll activate this switch directly if I'm careful. So there's less chance of failure if I do that. So if I mount that here in some clear epoxy, or the spawner saying as Gary would say, uh, that should hold it all in place nicely. So the next job I need to do is get everything wired together. So I can just mount it once it's all done. That's going to involve removing most of these wires, except for the green and the blue one, which will stay in place. This short black and red are the ones that will go to the atomizer. And this black and the missing red one connects to B plus which you may be able to see tiny little thing there and we fill the battery I'll leave the battery to the last I think first one I need to do is connect up the potentiometer back to the board which is the original cause of the failure of this device so Turn up these wires again. Which is easier said than done as these wires are so small. And just pop them back onto the board. Now in this configuration it doesn't matter which way around the wires go. Except that I don't want to stay where they're put. Which way on you put these will affect what direction the is up and which is down. But I've got no clue which is which. And we'll discover that later. And we are back for a second week. Um, 
Now I know the, uh, the, the thumb is most definitely getting better, uh, but at the moment the nose is, is definitely getting wetter. Uh, I think I've, I have one of those man colds coming on. I think it's when I'm finally chilling and, uh, and, and getting back to normal and, uh, and it's all taking toll. But I've decided not to do this this, this week, I'm going to start this next week, I need this to be a little bit more healed, uh, shall we say. Um, it's good, I can press it and stuff now, but there's still a real tender spot in the middle. I didn't take off as much as I thought I did. Um, like I say, it, it was still a, a little chunk, but it, it went right down and, and I've just got to wait for the middle bit to heal and, and real good. Um, it's been a nightmare waiting today. So what are we going to do? We're going to have a look at uh, this one, the one that, uh, that, that come back to me um, because it was faulty. Now, I'll see if I can go down a little bit, and I've got to get used to all this zoomy stuff again and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I know what the problem is, is is this component on the board yeah, has, has gone. You can see down in there, it's gone. And these are our favoured little uh, VV boards. These are nice little units. So what we're going to do is, is just have a look at piecing this back together, and we can talk through. Um, if you don't know... Uh, you know, or if you're new to modding, this this is probably the safest bet um, to start with. Uh, this is a simple little step down board, um, and you've got a little pot on here that, that can increase and decrease the voltage. Um, the batteries uh, run in a way that you sort of got your pause running through, sorry, neg running through to the pause, running through to neg back up to the pause. Effectively, this setup. Um, doubles the uh, the voltage of your batteries um, stacking batteries as it's known now these boards are, are known for being very 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 safe um, they have a lot of protection built in them they've got short protection um, they have uh, if, if they go below a certain level it won't work um, with all that said battery safety is is very 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 important you need to, uh, to monitor your own batteries. Do not rely on the circuitry in something you know, to do the job for you. Always monitor your batteries. Now that can be done um, with, a, uh, with a multimeter. I mean, this is, is probably one of the more expensive versions. Um, probably about 120 quid, or you can get them for a, a tenner. I prefer the Flukes because I work with them day in, day out, and I know they, they're good, um, and, and they give me very accurate readings. So what are we gonna do? Let's break this down um, as we're going and, and build it back up type thing. This is a repair. Um, it's been well used and abused. Uh, it's a, a coffin tin mod that we did a little while ago. And the first thing I've got to do is, is actually take off um, the, uh, the solder points to the board. Now it's pretty much, as Mark was talking a little bit about soldering last week, pretty much the same sort of scenario. I'm just going to bring in a, a reel of solder and, and the reason for that you're going to have to, like I say, excuse me, I haven't done this for a long time and I've got my hands in the way and everything. We used to be relatively okay at this, but um, we'll see how we go. I've got my solder, soldering iron heated to around about 400 degrees C. Um, and I'm just wiping off the tip. I'm going to tin the tip now on, uh, on my solder. And I'll just dab this on and start taking these bits off. So, like I say, I know the problem with this is the board. So we're sort of, we're halfway there before we start. And with a nice hot iron, it's very easy to, uh, to just dab on and take off. I'm not too worried about keep tinning and cleaning while I'm removing components because I know that component is, is out of the way and it's shot, as you can see. That's why it's not working. So what am I going to test before we, we sort of start piecing this thing back together? The way that, that we used to rig these things up is I normally take the negative switch or the negative terminal via a switch. So feed that in through the switch and back out to the board. So effectively we're feeding the, uh, the, the negative portion is, is switching the board on and off. Um, the two bits I had up here were the output terminals and those are simply going up to the atomizer connection. In this case it's, uh, it's an Ego um, and they're also twisted together with a voltage board. Nice and simple. 
like I say, we will. We, we've done this one many, many, many times. We we'll quite happily break stuff like this down again um, if it's something that you want to see. Now I've got a uh, a virginal board that I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in now. I'm just gonna open this one up. It's a brand spanking new board. It's black, but and a little bit smaller. But there's there's not much difference between the two. They're they're pretty much identical. Um, these can be found on on eBay for you know they're not that expensive. Um, not that expensive at all. The one thing I said I wanted to check, um, which is going to be the switch. I just want to make sure the switch is is all good and and working um, before we start piecing stuff back together. So I'm going to bring in my my multimeter, and what I'm going to do is switch that to if you like a continuity test or as many like to call it the beep test so effectively your two prongs when you touch them together you get a beep it means you've got a a continuity of circuit it means the circuit is actually flowing around to complete the beep so I need to pop this on either terminal of my switch Whoop, so I told you, that little phone was getting right in my heart. It's annoying me now. So I'm on both terminals, I'm going to press the switch. And I've got a beep, which is all good. The other thing I suppose I could test is, is the um, display, to make sure the display is still functioning correctly. Um, and I can probably, let me just grab, reach over and grab, you might hear bangs, crashes and all sorts, but let me just reach over and grab a, um, a tiny battery. I've got a tiny battery here, and the way this is rigged up, that hopefully if I, if I put the, uh, the two bits, pos and neg, going up to the ATI connection on there, I should get a volt, yeah, there we go. So we know that's reading at 4.13, I know this battery is fresh off the charge, so that's roundabout right. Next stage is, is going to be to uh, to tin up our uh, our new board um, to to be inserted into the mod. We'll pop away and we'll come back in two. We're gonna we're gonna start breaking things down because there's there's a lot of new people that that, that have asked a lot of questions. Um, you know this week, and, and I'm pretty impressed that that most of of the new modders that are coming through. And not wanting to start on a simple, you know, the, the simple stuff. They're all diving in at DNAs and this that, and the other, which is brilliant. But you've got to understand some of the principles behind soldering and all those bits be be before. You know, you, you uh, I've knackered so many DNA boards. Um, it's unbelievable. But hopefully this will give you a guide in terms of, you know, how to, to do the soldering, how to piece things together. Um, like I say. We're going to wing it and see how it goes. I'll be back in two. And there we go. We are back in the room. So our first little section um, over and done with. Um, now it's in chapter in that. A lot of people were saying about uh, about drilling and holding things in, in your hand. Um, I, I don't know. I, I've probably, and, and it's personal choice, obviously own safety first. But for me personally, and and probably for Mark, I I much prefer to to hold something in my hand and, and drill slowly. I I feel I've got much more control, um, and I've I've actually had you know, more injuries actually clamping something in a vice and not having that feel when you're working with smaller components and and slipping. Um, uh, up to it, you, everybody's own personal choice, and yes, it does look very dangerous when you're holding something in the hand and drilling into it. Um, but if you control the speed, you've got good sharp drill bits and you know what you're doing, especially in, in plastic and things like that, it is relatively safe. Um, as long as you, if you're not grabbing it, forcing it and drilling through your hand. Um, but like I say, each to their own and, and your your own safety is, is your own responsibility. Um, let me pop into our first little air break. Um, we'll pop back after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.
Weber and I Weber Alexa, best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iweber.co.uk and iweber-alexa.co.uk. I Weber and I Weber-alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of WeberTrails.tv. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And we're back in the room. And yeah, I was I was reading some of the comments in chat set. And yes, I, I do have a missing top of a thumb. Nothing to do with hand tools in the workshop. Um, I'm very, very careful with the hand tools in the workshop. And that was done in the kitchen um, where I'm, I'm not so careful. And I think I could be on MasterChef. Um, yeah, a la finger menu or, or, or the finger buffets, basically something like that. Um, but in in here, it, it's it's safety first, and and uh, you know I spent the whole weekend working at a, a lathe spinning at God knows what speeds um, with hand tools, and and not one injury. Um, you know, it, your own safety, it, what you feel comfortable with, do. If you don't feel comfortable handling at all. Um, no, we're going to go down that route again, and I'm not going. I promised myself I wouldn't go down that route tonight. Um, let's crack on with Mark. I'll be back in two. Now, my next job's going to be to solder up the negative, as I've already got a positive in place. And, of course, turn up the wires ready for connecting to the board. So, quickly turn up the wires. Which isn't having a heck of a job to do. And because of the way I'm going to be connecting this, I'm just going to add the negative to the outside of the 510. I just cleaned it, not really help. Just pop the wire on there. And hopefully to make life a little bit easier, I've just clamped this in place. So I'm gonna have to Solder this wire. I have to do with the extra hand. So, a particular point is the negative for the atomizer. Those both sides are already tinned up. I can just drop that under there. Now, the positive I have removed. And it's right at the top here. There's not a lot of room to work with. Like an incredibly small amount of room to work with. There you have it. That's the atomizer fully connected. I've got the potentiometer connected up. I just need to connect up the battery, which is here. As you remember from last week, I've already prepared this. Now, with this pot, I need to be a little bit careful because I'm going to be soldering a live battery to a circuit. So, position this right. See if I can zoom in a bit for this bit of thing. There we go. And you 
you should be able to see that there's a battery negative and a battery positive point here. Just two tiny little dots. And I've removed the wires from them, so pre-tinned the battery. It's just a matter of getting the wires soldered in place. So, do a positive first. as far apart as possible. Remembering that the tip of the saw going in will conduct electricity very well. So we don't want to short that out. Now, fingers crossed if I press this button. Nothing at all happens. Okay. I'm not entirely certain what is going on here, but if I show you the battery has got 3.6 volts in it. And there is definitely power running through the circuit. Actually if I press the button, it does react. So Yes, to be working. I'm not sure why it didn't light up at all. I guess we'll finish, see when I finish the mod. But this is basically the circuit rebuilt. And now it's time to put it all together. connects in there. And the battery slots down into that position. It appeared to have made the wires for the atomizer connector too long by twice. I should measure that. sit down on there and be activated. And that just needs to slot into place there. I think just with a bit of epoxy we should be good to go. Okay so we're back down on the bench and as I was I was sort of waffling earlier um, it's been a long day. Taxi! Is, is basically a, a lot of the, the new modders uh, are wanting to dive straight in at the deep end, which, which is great. It's fantastic and, and play with DNAs. But the most common thing that I get asked is, is I can't solder. Can I, can I make that board, um, you know, without soldering? Soldering isn't that difficult. It, it's, it's not at all. You just need a good iron. 
and like I say I've got this heated to around about 400 degrees I'm on a, a little cheap variable voltage um, soldering iron I've had this for nearly three years now and it's still going I think it's about 30 quid or something from uh, a company called CPC um, or CPC Farnell as they're known I'm just cleaning my tip up while I'm talking to you and Mark talked a bit about that last week and what I'm going to do is just dab a tiny bit of solder on my tip now it'll stop melting I'm just going to go on the, the terminals of the board and just a little tiny dab and do that down now I, I know I can probably get two of these before I need to give my tip a little clean again spin it around and we'll do it to the other side there's our board nicely tinned up now if I bring back in the the piece that we were talking about these boards are relatively simple and we've we've talked about them we've done them to death to be honest with you but it seemed an opportune moment to uh, to, to do this really because obviously um, I don't know if I mentioned it but I've, I've sort of hurt my finger um, so let's have a, a little look through this now this is our battery supply as I say I'm going to neg to pause back round to uh, to the neg up to the pause and I've got two outputs one here which is which is going to the input of the board one which is running via the switch which we know is working and we tested and one back out to to the neg so these two wires need to go on the input of my board now my input my board is marked up he says looking at it. he also needs glasses I tell you so my input is marked up relatively simply there and there I've got a good sort of stable wire here so I'm going to use that and I'm going to just tin my tip and bring this board up to that connection move some stuff out of the way and I'm going to try and do this floating not ideal but there we go and that's held and I'm going to do the same with the uh, with an egg wire try and get that to a reasonable position where it's it's stable and I'm going to position my board around and bring that up to the wire just cleaning my tip, uh, bringing it up, and dabbing that on. So there's my input. Input sorted. Now I've just got to sort my my output, which is my pos and minus. Which, as I said earlier, I've got my pos and my minus coming out of this board, going up to the atomizer connection. Um, and in the atomizer connection I've got two wires twisted together which is a pos and a neg coming from the display board now what that will give you is the display of the voltage when you press the button um, if you have no atty on it will show it with no load if you take the atty off it will show it with load um, it's quite common if you set these, these boards up um, adjust your voltage, screw your atty on you'll, you'll have a, a, a slight volt drop not not massive but you will get one so it's, it's always best to sort of pulse your atty and, and adjust it while you're on so i'm just positioning this board up now so i can do some and you can see why the fingers annoying the tits off me just tinning my tip bringing this back down dabbing that on and let's go with a neg Tinning my tip, this one's going to be a difficult angle, bringing that in, and bang, I've got my board in situ. Now I would sort of expect that, that I should have something working, so let me grab a couple of batteries. I'm just going to pop these little buggers in. Hit my button, and I've got sodding nothing. I wonder why that would be. There it goes. Batteries one sort of making a good contact. So as you can see, I you can see this. Let me spin this round. If I press my button, I've got 7.7 .7 volts, which is an, an, an accumulative, that was a big word, total of the two batteries. Now when I adjust this little screw on, on this board here, that will step that down and you'll see that on your display. What I'm going to do now is, is pop away, heat up a glue gun um, so I can piece this thing back together, get it all nice and secure. Um, we know it's working, 
The one thing I should have tested is is for shorts on the attic, uh, the atomizer connection, um, and they are a common uh, sort of failure point, which we'll go through again um, at some point in depth. So I just bring my bipometer in again. I'll poke one in on the centre pin, go on the neg. Now look, straight away, I've got a problem there. Should have tested that first. So I've also got a dead short on that rubber. Kerry, what have you been doing to this mod? So I need to replace the rubber on this. Now I won't do that on camera, I'm going to do that off camera because that's another show. I'll pop back in two, but effectively I now need to extract the the, the centre of this. Um, ee, it's not going to focus. Extract the centre, put a new rubber in, and uh, and seal it back up again. But we'll go through that again. Um, common failure point. Horrible bloody things. These they need to be they need to be rethought. You know, re redesigned. Hmm. Wasn't expecting that. Like I say, when when you're when you're looking at a mod, although this component have failed, switches working, batteries are working, we've got air display, could have put all that together, screwed it on, had a dead shot, wouldn't have worked. Always test your rubber. If your rubber is blown, you've got problems. I'll be back in two. Right, so we're back in the room and I've been heating my uh, my hot glue gun. Um, now I had to hunt high and low for this. I haven't used a lot of stuff for modding um, for the far, yep, fast past few months. Um, what I'm going to do now, normally if, if you were making a mod like this from scratch, you would have worked out where you're going to do your placement. Now I've already done this and when I did this the first time we've, we've hollowed down the uh, battery compartment so it slips yeah, nicely into the, uh, into the coffin bit. So I need to sort of work out now, in reverse, how I'm going to get me bits in for gluing. My th I hate this bloody thumb. It's driving me potty. So just pull the board and the stuff out of the way. Now I've got a special plan for this um, to, to finish it and, and I might show you during the live show, which is now. Um, but all the stuff is done. So all I'm going to do is tack these things in place. Now, if you're going to be putting um, a battery compartment against metal, I normally stick a, a bit across the back and, and poke that in so it doesn't short and all that sort of stuff. But because I'm taking this in, I'm just going to run a couple of beads of the hot glue in. This is a couple of beads. I'm still swamping it. But a bit of that in. Dish, dosh, dosh. Whack it down. Get the battery compartment in. Just hold that for a few ticky doodles, and as you can see, it's coming up through. Oh, Jesus. It's coming up through there. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll let that set and then trim it off because that can be an absolute pain in the bum. Then I'm going to be able to get down and show you that if you're putting these battery compartments in, they have holes in. That comes up, and that's what stops the battery making a, a good connection when that sets. It's like rubber, and it can hold it off the uh, off the nipple. For, for a few seconds and, and cause it to, uh, to that's why I roll the batteries around at the start of this to uh, to get it to, to hit. So I'm going to go around and, and gradually place these components in and, and glue them down um, and then I'll pop back when, when it's all sort of sorted. But effectively don't be tempted to go taking it off now. Let it set hard and then take it off with a, a fine blade or a chisel or something like watch your fingers um, something like that and and that'll give you a uh, a nice clean run for the battery if you leave it as it is obviously the battery is going to get stuck um, all that sort of stuff I'll pop back in two when I've got the rest glued in and there we go we are back in the room once again um 
if you hear barking, it is not me, it's next door's dog. They've just decided to let it out, so I do apologize for that. Um, and as pointed out in chat, I may need to rethink my terminology with uh, with blown rubber for our American viewers. Uh, yeah, we've got a few in tonight, and, and obviously if you're watching this on the replay, you should have been here during live chat. Um, the dog is starting to bark. I'm gonna run into our second hour break, and we'll see you back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. There we go. And a silence neutered dog. Um, and uh, and all is good in Dibley land. Um, so welcome back um, to the final part of, of this little show. We've been running through a few bits and pieces. Obviously, um, if you know any of the stuff that you want to you want to look at in a bit more depth as as we go through these shows, just shout, just holler, and and we will do our best to uh, to go through what we can with you. Um, a little bit excited this week. Uh, obviously, Vape Fest is coming up, and it is a uh, a camping event. Um, and I had my 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 tent arrived um, on uh, Saturday. I think it was I was on the lathe on on Saturday, and the wife came in and said, "You've got a parcel in the porch." Um, Sunday morning, she come back to uh, to to a, a little shock when me and Gemma were playing camping in in the front room, um, and the tent I ordered on the website looked about you know that big. Um, in fact, filled the whole of our damn front room, and you can get a double bed in it and all sorts. Um, it's got a kitchen, bathroom, uh, you know, all that. No, it's it's good. I was I was shocked at the size of the damn thing. Um, but yes, it's coming. We, it's going to be that we're going to be. Hopefully, I'm hoping if we can, and and if I can get power, um, uh, we're going to be there with with a uh, you know marquee and all that sort of stuff. I'm hoping to be taking the lathe. If I can get it there, I've got a lot of stuff to take. If I can take the lathe, um, we'll be doing a bit of uh, turning on the day um, and, and providing, uh, you know, I can't promise anything. But if I can, the lathe will be there and, and I'll be doing a few lessons and stuff on the day with the lathe. So fingers crossed we can get there. I'm trying to work out all the finer details and, and stable ground and, and a platform and safety and goggles and all that sort of stuff. But we'll see how it goes. We're going to crack in to our last two little bits and uh, and then I'll, I'll come back and see you very shortly after this. Right then, as I'm not 100% happy with this circuit, although it does actually appear to be lighting up now, uh, I end up uh, grounded out the negative on the battery. Appears to have fixed it, but I'm still not 100 happy with it all. So I'm just gonna, rather than use the clear epoxy, I'm just gonna try some hot glue. The stuff I hate. So start off around the atomizer connector. Thank you. 
this circuit. I need to make sure that this wire stays out of the way. Of that hole, because that's going to be a spring hole that's going to be used. As you can see, why I hear this stuff. There's a test get everywhere, and I end up burning myself quite often. Pop the lid on. Right, so I've given it plenty of time to cool off, and while I was waiting, I've added the screws to the four corners. And see, I couldn't add them in here because there's components in the battery behind them, but it seems to hold together rather well. And a quick tip if you're going to take some of this apart, Put the screws somewhere safe, because trying to find ones that fit is a real nightmare. It's taken me forever to find ones, because I lost the old ones. So, let's see if I can somehow get this all on camera. I can really do with an extra hand here. the button hopefully now we have five and a half volts simple as that and to adjust it a little bit of adjuster here I'm adjusting that one, but that could be because there's no load on it. I don't know. I'll pop one atomizer on and see what I get. Yeah, it's vaping fine. You hear it sizzling away nicely. So that's not going to be an issue. Turn this all the way to the top. That feels fairly weak, so if I turn it all the other way. Oh. Right, so that's minimum, and turning clockwise is increasing it, right? Yeah, so that's what. So really, for this device, there's no screen or anything like that on it. So you're going to be testing it up and down by feel, really. So I can just get a fingernail in there and adjust it slightly, but the screwdriver's a little easier. There you have the finished mod. And what I may well do. I might replace the hot glue with epoxy, but probably not. I think I'll just leave it the way it is. Uh, what I'll probably do is, once I'm really happy with it, is run some plastic weld around this edge just to seal it all back in place properly and make sure nothing comes apart. That's basically it. 
You may be wondering about the charging, as of course the Ego C has built in charging via an ordinary Ego charger. But what I'll do, I'll add one of these charging extensions onto here. And what I use is one of the five port uh, battery chargers for the Egos. Uh, it's only 150 milliamp charging. So it will take a little while to charge, but using that I know I can put any device I like into that charging unit and I know it's going to charge safely. So all these different mods I make with built-in Ego style charging all go onto that because they've got various different batteries in and I don't want to risk anything so that's what I'll be using. Right, so we're all glued back in place um, and uh, I've not been too neat with this purely for the reason that I'm going to do something a little bit different with this. Um, I might tell you, I might not. But uh, effectively I've, I've now got rid of the short which was on the Etsy connection. I've, I've replaced the rubber and, and all of that's working fine now. If I hit my button you should see that that is now coming at somewhere around about 4.13 or something around there volts. Um, I need to turn it around. Very simple. If you haven't seen these boards before, if you have you know how they work. You can just adjust your screw and knock it up a little bit. So 4.29 is where I'm at there. This mod is one that we did a long time ago. It has been well abused and well battered. Um, but we've given it a new lease of life with a new board. I think what you have to realise when when you're when you're making a mod and and yeah when you're buying a mod as well, nothing has got a definitive lifespan. Um, you know, warranties is that they get abused to buggery. And if you look at the lid on on this thing, you will see it has been um, well and truly used and abused, which is good for for you know for, oh yeah, God, sod in thumb for for what they cost. You know, cheap as chips and happy days and they'll last and do what you want them to do and if they're repairable, they're repairable. This one, I think, after this, uh, the tin's going to be so buggered, it's going to be absolutely pointless. It's, it's worth getting another tin and starting again. Um, one of the things, when, when you're modding something, you know, it, it, it's treat it as a, as a hobby more, more, than, more than anything you, you're going to sort of... You know, use for a lifetime. They're not going to last a lifetime. If, if you can tinker, you can fix, you can do all this sort of stuff. Happy days. Um, going back to the mod, we've got a new board in there now. That was the point of failure. So was the attic connection. We've sealed that up. Our little display was working fine. Battery holders obviously working fine. Um, let's clag something on the top of it. I'm just going to put a beauty ring on. Now the reason I'm going to put a beauty ring on is to make it beautiful. Um, it's because I've got a couple of little drippers today and um, if you see them, you see them. If you didn't, you didn't. Um, but they were going very, very cheap. They were these uh, type of little drippers and they were being picked up for about £1.60 something each. <laughs> which was silly. Um, I'm just going to clag that on the top. If you want to know where they were coming from and if there's any left, just have a little search around the forums. Um, there was quite a few going. Now, there's me dripping at it on the top. Put that on. I think that looks pretty funky. Um, I'm just going to stick a drip tip on top, and there is our, our reformed uh, coffin mod, we'll call it. Let's just give this drip a go because I've literally just dripped in here on, on, some, uh, on the call that comes with it, which is a 2 ohm call. Ooh, it's sounding good. And it's tasting good as well. It's a little bit airy, but bloody hell. I may be here some time. I 
happy days with that. Oh, <coughs> yeah. That's good. Nice. One pound twenty, whatever it is, can't be bad. Um, but yes, we've rejuvenated uh, a little coffin mod. Um, perfect size for my thumb. If I'd have taken it off fully, um, we've we've rejuvenated. We all oh, we've done it. Added a new board. This that, and the other. I promise next week we should be back to full capacity. And and next week um, we're gonna. I should have all my fingers and th if anything don't go wrong. Um, and we're gonna take a look at this. But that was a little uh, a little look through of, of how we do it. If you wanna see one of these in its entirety, we've done it many times. It works, this sort of layout works very well with a VAMO board, with this sort of board, um, adding a, you know external display. Effectively, what we're gonna be doing in this is, is this sort of scenario, but with a single battery. Whereas this board here is a step down board, i.e. it needs a, a higher voltage coming in and the board steps down the voltage to what you desire. Um, with this one, we we're hoping to put the DNA, which is more of a, uh, a step up board with a wattage control, um, and, and that will sort of take a, a single cell and boost it. I hope that is uh, sort of self explanatory. Um, if it's not, I don't care. No, I do. Um, any questions, far and through to us, we'll do our best to answer all we can. Hopefully that was a bit more modding. Um, I didn't plan to come back and, and chop fingers off, but it happened and, and this is where we are. Um, back to the studio, or back to me. Uh, hopefully a little bit useful. But this, I'll tell you what, I love these boards. And there we go, we are back in the room for the final time tonight. I, I just want to uh, sort of just catch up on a, on a few bits. We were asked a, a question in chat um, about the Ego connections. Where can you get them from? Can you buy them or, or did I repair of an old mod? Um, a bit of both really. You can you can buy them um, from many retail suppliers and you can repair of an old Ego. Um, you know, we'll go, we can go through that if that's what you want to see. Um, they're available from a lot of places. And there was one question, is Vapefest camping this year? It's up to you. Uh, yes, it is. Vapefest has got uh, a big campsite. Um, a lot of people have already pre-booked and this and the other. There's power there if you want it. You've got to request it in advance. Um, go to the Vapefest uh, for Dummies website. Everything is there. Um, next week, what would that bring? We don't know, but I, I can tell you one thing. I'm, I'm going to tease you ever so slightly. Um, in, in the coming months, um, Mark will be uh, working on the lathe. The metal lathe that I, I have here in, in the workshop um, is being packaged up um, and being sent to Mark. So we'll be seeing some lathe action from Mark in, in, in the coming months, no doubt. Um, with all that said, uh, it is time for me to, uh, to wrap this up tonight. Um, Hopefully, if you've enjoyed it, tune in next week. Um, don't forget, if you're in, in, if you're in the chat, thank you very, very much. It, it's always fun and, and good watching that. If you're watching this on the replay, you should be here live. Um, a good bunch, as Dave Dorm says, we have the best chat in the world. Um, yeah, and I've, I'm picking up bad habits, clagging and atty. I don't know where I got that from, for Christ's sake. Um, but I'm sure it's these guys. Uh, it's been emotional. Um, as it always is, I need to find my titles and uh, I will see you next week. Good night. Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.